Hillel's beauty increased as this duration in eternity traveled with no physical motion, and his beauty became a power, whereas he pronounced openly his beauty and importance in the heavens. In the heavens. It was not this pronouncement that was forbidden. It was the mean in his will or desire that was forbidden. For he was to pronounce this in the name and the glory of Yahweh, in thanksgiving, Thank you, admiration, I love you. homage, and super obedience towards his creator. So he became proud in his appearance, which appearances look like a function in the heavens. Hillel exerted his independence from Yahweh, However, there is no place outside of Yahweh. My father, my father. For outside of the light world which rests the kingdoms of the heavens, it's Yahweh again. <laughs> but in the dark world of extreme power, the powerful fire in the wrath of the first four spirits in the divine engine room. Engine room. Beyond the dark world is the unfathomable and no creature can return into that and maintain its individuality. The dark world is not hell, but is the ground of it. If a life form or life living principle enters this powerful world, that life form or principle will be eternally destroyed, everlasting. For nothing that came from Yahweh can ever be annihilated, ever. Yahweh gives birth to all creatures from the fiery world, yet place all life forms and living giving principles in the light world to give them untold felicity, even the angels. Returning back to Hillel, the second thing that Hillel desired was the position of the word or son, Yahweh himself. Disclaimer, the upcoming seeing you will see is not to be taken literally. These images and words are only extremely poor markers to help the viewer and reader to understand what the war in the heavens are. These movements do indeed exist, but not in a human fashion that is being shown in this scene. The angels or thoughts are the source of where all human bodily motions originates. The mean of these words are very true, however, they were and are spoken in an angelic tone of power, mingled with emotional vibrations like an ocean of forever going knowledge as a never ending understanding at different levels and scales of comprehensions, even about one single thing. With this being said, it is impossible to write what was said, however, if one looks at the meaning behind the words, one would arrive at the ground. Forthwith, there are very important, true, undeniable concepts which are imperative to be understood. Jacob Bohm touched on some of these things. Nevertheless, I will show what I saw from my position in consciousness. And these understandings will aid the viewer to the apprehensions of Jacob Bohm's writings. First, there are only two types of minds, two types of conscious awareness that exists in the whole universe. Romans 8, 5 through 8. Both of these minds are infinite as to existence. Nevertheless, one will cease to exist in reality. Matthew 25, 46, Daniel 12 and 2. These minds or two states are the spiritual mind and the carnal mind. The divine light itself and darkness that does not comprehend the light. Life or light, John 8, 12 and 1, Peter 2 and 9, and death, which is darkness, Genesis 1, 4, Luke 1, 79. The second thing that needs to be assimilated is that the heavens are states of consciousness, 10 in measure of wisdom as compartments or coach houses of a divine estate, 7 in a scale of power and glory as stairways of enlightened knowledge, and the ten and the seven are contained on the third heaven, operating as a divine three-story fortified castle 
or heavenly atmosphere of immutableness, which is crouched in silent audibleness, sung by a song of ineffable words. The third thing is that in these divine states of consciousness, Yahweh, or that which is considered to be the Texagrammaton, decorated these states with his very own thoughts. These thoughts are what the Bible calls angels. These thoughts came forth by his word into creaturely beings. The fourth thing to be realized is the nature of the ex-prince throne angel of the light world who was Hillel. Hillel was given a very high position but chose with his angelic will to take the crown of deity which is the very potent wrath of power to rule the heavens. Jacob Boehm told us what he saw pertaining to the ex-throne angel of the light world who went to the dark world to commandeer the hidden fire of deity, the threefold life, Aurora and Mysterium Mag by Jacob Boehm. What Jacob Boehm saw was true, for it was shown to me in consciousness that he was burnt by the warrior prince throne angel of the dark fiery world, Michael, at his first blow, striking Satan's right eye. Thus, from the fire of Michael's weapons, a word changed Satan's form to that of a hideous dragon losing its beautiful form. Revelation 12, 7 through 10. This is why Satan cannot comprehend the light. For eyes are their awareness to perceive the light. This one eye can see only but the blackness of the mundane universe now. This is also the spiritual cause of why eye patches are originally black. These angels being thoughts have words embedded in their very being. Therefore, Satan and his hosts use their words as menacing and medical spiritual weapons. The holy angels use their words in defense to the opposition by forging their beautiful words into beautiful weapons to ward off Satan and his hosts. This heavenly event is impossible to convey on this level of existence. This is our weak, feeble attempt to show the viewer in the poorest manner how and why this event took place.
the mountain dragon, the serpent of war, and of war, and of war. And I will create my own image and likeness. I will create for every human the false self, the false, the false personality, the false personality. And I will put it into their very beings, and they will be mine, and they will serve me. I give. I declare war on the sides of the north. Righteous statue s euphorically forever rising to everlasting purple cases mighty wise my powerfully majestic merciful holy savior of men the omnipotent one the shining sun Yahshua the divine audacious loving king the Asakuno the Asakuno spoken word a splendor a splendor a splendor my Giel I have not ever seen such fighting in all eternity neither have I if it wasn't for the power of Yahweh, I would have not been able to defeat him. Where is Uriel? Here we come, my Prince Commander. Uriel! Uriel! The father of life, El Elyon, the holy, mighty, all-striking, mercifully bright, gloriously divine, unspeakable, holy, cornucopia of supreme power for the chivalric delight of man. Prince Commander, we must warn Yahshua. I think we are too late. The mighty Yahshua already knows. Behold, the glory, the glory, the glory.